Welcome back, game makers. I am Super Tommy. This is Arcade. And in this video, we're going to show you how to make a Phaser 3 game from zero. We're going to start with an empty folder and then create a full Pong game from there. So we're going to use Visual Studio Code. If you don't have it, go download it. Just Google Visual Studio Code and then download it. It's for Windows and Mac. We're going to use NPM to install our dependencies and launch a development server so that we can test our game. Now we're going to show you all of that from scratch. So let's get started right now. All right, so here we have our project. There is nothing in here, not a folder, not a file. So you'll need to get NPM because we're going to do some installing of NPM packages to help us run this project. So you have to go to npmjs.com slash get npm and then follow these instructions to get npm. You can also use nvm if you want to be adventurous or you already have uh, npm installed and you would like a better way to manage npm. But however you want to do it, you can just get npm. And at Arcade, we have an article about installing nvm at the Arcade block. You can go there and check that out. So the first thing we're going to do is install parcel because that's how we're going to start our uh, server to try out a game. Now parcel is a fast zero config application bundler and we like it because it is zero config. We can just install it and then start using it. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. We're going to bring up a terminal. Just go to window, go to terminal, new terminal from Visual Visual Vis Visual Studio Code. Okay, so we're in the folder. We're gonna do npm init. Now once you've got npm installed, you can do this, but you need to type npm installed first. npm init, then we're gonna set up our project. We're gonna say yes to all these things. Doesn't really matter. So now that is set up. It made a package.json for us. Now we're gonna install parcel. npm install parcel dash bundler. So it's going to download and install parcel into our project. Now, while it's doing that, we can also make a source folder in our project called SRC. That's where we're going to put all our source files. So SRC, so new folder, SRC. Now we're going to make a index.html. So index.html. This is the entry point for our app. So let's just set up a bare bones HTML file. I'm going to call title Pong. And then we'll give it a body tag. And in the body tag, just so that we see it's working, hello world. Save that. All right, now parcel is installed. So let's go to package.json. Now I prefer to use tabs, but you can use spaces. So we're going to make a new script in package.json scripts field. I'm going to call this start. And what we're going to do is parcel index.html. So that will tell parcel to serve our, our index.html file. So let's try it. We go down here to the terminal and go npm run start. Ah, uh, yes. So we need to say source because of the source index.html. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Parcel source. That's where we put our index.html file in source. Now that we've saved it, let's try it again. npm run start. All right, parcel has got it going. Let's launch a new tab. We're going to go to localhost 1234. Now we know to go there and you see hello world. That's just what we have in our index. Now we know to go there because this is what parcel is telling us right here. Localhost 1234 is where our app is running. Now, if you don't like 1234, you can change it. And you can look at parcel's docs for that. But um, if I remember correctly, it is, I think, dash P. And let's say you can make it 8,000. So we can try it. We can do control C to terminate our process in the terminal and then do npm run start again. And there you can see we have localhost 8000 instead of 1234, right? 
which means if we go here, this will no longer work because we've now changed it to 8,000. So there we go. All right, so that's our index page, but this is very boring. So let's get phaser going. So first, so I deleted the hello world, we don't need it. We're gonna do npm install phaser to get phaser into our project. npm install phaser. Now you can also download phaser from the phaser site and just include the JS file in your project, but we're gonna install it from npm to keep our dependencies in one place. So that is now installed. We are going to make a main.js. We made a new file in source in our SRC folder and call it main.js. Now we're gonna use a modern ES6 JavaScript in this video. So now that we've installed phaser, we can do import phaser from phaser. Now, if you did not install phaser from NPM, you will not be able to do this and the process will be a little bit different. Let me know in the comments below if that's how you prefer to work and we can make a different video for that kind of workflow. So now we've installed main.js, we've uh, created main.js and imported phaser. Let's create a phaser game instance. First, we're gonna make a config, which is gonna take a bunch of game configs. So now to know what this does, we can go to the phaser website, click learn and go to API docs. Now we know we're creating a phaser game, which is phaser.game and it's gonna take a config. So phaser.types.core.gameconfig. So we need, not all of these, you can see these are optional. Basically they're all optional, but we're gonna specify some things. So we'll do width, we'll say 800. Height, we'll say 500. Um, type, and we'll do phaser.auto. So this will let phaser determine whether we're gonna use canvas or not, or WebGL. That's the other option. So leaving it that auto would be fine. If the player's browser supports WebGL, it will use WebGL. If not, it will fall back to Canvas. So this is the minimal config that we're gonna use. Now we're gonna make a new game instance and do new phaser.game and give it the config that we just created up there. So that's good. Now go back to index. We need to include our main.js file. So we'll make a script tag and main.js like that. Now parcel is not running. So we do npm run start. So we can try this out. So parcel will build a little slower the first time it does something new but every subsequent time it'll be very fast. So that was 9.36 seconds. Let's go back to our game, reload, and we have a phaser window created. It's all black because we have nothing in our game. Let's just move this over here and just close out these. We don't need these. Keep the docs open. Okay, so we have phaser set up and running. So let's make a new scene Let's make a folder called scenes. We're gonna put our scenes into its own folder. We're gonna make, let's say a title screen scene. So title screen.js. So we made a scenes folder in the source folder, and then we made a title screen.js file in the scenes folder. Now here we are going to import phaser from phaser like we did before. Now we're gonna use ESX modern JavaScript to create classes. So export default class title screen extends phaser.scene because we are creating a scene. So there's that. Now every scene has a preload member method and a creates method. Now we've nothing to preload right now, but just to make sure that the scene is working, we're gonna add a text. This dot add dot text. So we'll put it at 400 and 250, the middle of the screen and our text will be hello world, exclamation. Beautiful. Now you see that I have IntelliSense here. I have add, you know, various things you can do. You can do the scene uh, plugin, the scale manager. 
So now if you did not import phaser like this and install by NPM, you will probably not get these IntelliSense uh, helps if you had just downloaded phaser from the website and included it here. Because the phaser NPM package comes with these type files that lets VS Code help you out when you're coding. So we recommend that you install phaser from NPM. All right, so we have this now. Let's go back to main.js and we are going to run our title screen. So let's import our title screen. Title screen from, let's see, scenes, title screen. So here's game. So we're gonna use the scene plugin and we're gonna add a new scene. So we're gonna call it title screen and we need to give phaser a unique key for every scene that we're gonna give it. And we're gonna, we're gonna basically key our title screen scene to the string title screen right here. This is our key. And then game.scene.start title screen. So parcel is gonna run it, there we go. And here we are, we have hello world in our, uh, in our phaser app right here. Now you see that it's not quite um, centered, so we're just gonna make it a little bit nicer. We're gonna do text and then text.set origin so that we're gonna set origin to the middle, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on X and Y. These values are from zero to one. So right now it's at zero. If we're gonna make it 0 0.5, it's gonna move it into the center. Save it and there we go. So that looks pretty good. We know our title screen is working. Now we want to make a game scene. That's where our game is going to be. So I just set up our scenes all at once now. We're gonna make a game.js in the scenes folder where the title screen was. Same thing, import phaser from phaser. And we are going to create this class. Now you don't have to do export default class here necessarily. If you did this, this is just ASX, JavaScript ES6 syntax. You can do this, this works fine as well. And again, uh, every scene has preload and create or can use preload and create. So now in the game scene, let's just do, add some text here as well to make sure that we know we are in the game scene. So same thing, game. All right, so now let's go back to main and we're gonna have to, we have to tell the scene plugin and tell phaser about our scene. Just like before, we're gonna import game from scenes game. And we're gonna register it like this, game.scene.add, we'll call it game. And pass in the game class. So scene start title screen. So we'll just comment this out for now. Instead, we're going to start game. So there's our game scene. So that is running. So now what should we do next? Let's make a ball in our game scene. So this, we delete that text, this.add dot, it's out of circle. We'll do a circle, we'll also put it at 400, 250. Let's just try a radius of 10, fill color, we want it white, which is that. There's our ball. So it doesn't do anything right now. There's no physics enabled. We can enable physics, so let's do that. Let's go back to main.js and we're gonna set in the config Physics default arcade and arcade. So we want no gravity. So we can just see if that is actually correct by going to the docs and looking for physics. So physics takes this physics config object which has a default like we have here. So it takes a default which we have 
and then arcade and then from arcade it's going to take this arcade world config and gravity is a vector 2 Where's, here it is x and y so it looks good we are we're following the docs here and the structure the phaser expects back to our game now our ball currently is just a circle it has no physics um, attached to it what we can do this dot physics dot add dot existing so let's just say this is ball we'll set the circle to our ball variable and give it to the physics engine and that did not work either so let's see so to help out we're going to turn and debug to true Oh, so gravity is zero, so it is there, so just just make this 200 so that we show that it does in fact do something. There we go. Now we do want it to be zero. Lovely. Now what we can do, ball.body dot set velocity. So we just give it some velocity right now. Um, let's see, we give it, let's see what that does. All right, so then it sends it over there to the bottom right. Now, we want it to bounce along the, the game board like Pong would do. So let's see, this dot physics dot, Let's see, there is a way to make it collide against the world, but I don't remember. So let's check out the documentation. Physics. Let's see. Physics. Try the physics world. Bounds, colliders. Okay, let's see. Now we're actually going to use a tutorial that we've made in the past. Help us out here. No one can remember all the various settings. It's always good to have a place to check back. So I believe I've seen this in this modern JS tutorial that we have. Let's see. So here we're doing that, we're doing that. Uh, okay, we do it on the actual game object, it looks like. So let's just make sure that our circle can do that. So what, a circle is an arc. Let's see, game, game objects, arc. So if we make, okay, arc. No. So where can we call set collide? Bound. Let's see where it belongs to. Yeah, space class body. Okay. Great. Let's get rid of these empty lines. All right. So to make it bounce around the world from the docs, we can see here that it is on the physics body. So so that we can prove that it is on phaser dot physics dot arcade dot body. So ball dot body dot set collide world bounds. Now these are all um, all optional, right? So by default, it'll just do it. And look at that. It's not very exciting. It should bounce off the walls. So you see these are those are the uh, parameters we can pass here. So let's uh, VS Code help us. There's value. We'll make that true. Bounce will make one on both X and Y. Now do it again. And there we go. Now our ball is bouncing. That is pretty cool. So now we have a bouncing ball. We can next create perhaps some paddles. Let's try that. So we're going to do const 
paddle left, we'll make a left paddle. And we're not gonna use any pictures, we're gonna use these shapes. I'm gonna make a rectangle. And so zero is over here on the left side of the screen for X, and then Y is the top of the screen. So zero down here is 500, zero to the right here is 800. So let's say we're gonna put this guy at 30X and middle. 250Y, we'll say the width is 50, we'll say the height is 100, it'll also be white, which is FF, 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 and alpha 1. So that's paddle left, and well, let's just try it first. If we can do less things, look at that, there it is, it's probably too big, but if we can um, test our game as we make it, instead of making a whole bunch of stuff and then testing it, we will be much better off. That's a decent sized paddle. Let's move that guy further over. Yeah, let's say that's good. So you always wanna build things in small chunks and then test them. So now that's why having a dev server that reloads automatically as you hit save, like, like you see here, Parcel does this for us. It makes it easier to just work on your project because uh, you'll make changes, you hit save, it's gonna show it to you immediately. So same thing with the ball, there's no physics object on this paddle. Do the same thing, this.physics.add.existing paddle left. Let's try it, we'll see. So there we go, it's drawn this uh, bounds in debug mode, see if our ball can hit it. Well, we can just help it. So instead of doing that, let's just go like that. And boom, all, all right. Yes, of course they don't just collide with each other. Now we need to create a collider in, in the phaser. So this.physics.add.collider, and we're gonna make the ball, let's say, let's say panel left, ball. So we're gonna make a collider between the panel and the ball. Here we go. And it pushes the ball away. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna make, how should we do this? Well, first it needs to bounce. So, dot body dot set bounce. So the bounce will be one. Let's see what this does. We may have to do that for the ball as well. Yes. So you saw the ball <laughs> bounce the paddle away. Dot body dot set bounce, one, one. We'll still push the paddle, <laughs> and it just stops. Okay, so let's just make the paddle not pushable. How should we do that? So we can do it a few ways. Dot, let's say we set the mass to something big. Hmm, it doesn't seem like the right IntelliSense, so... Do this dot physics dot arcade dot nope. dot body. Right. So let's see if this works instead, since we're not using TypeScript even right now, although that is recommended. We can try these JS docs and see if that gives us, okay. So what we're using here is JS docs to tell the VS code, that, and who's looking at, at the code actually, that body is of type phaser.physics.rk.body. That also means we get better IntelliSense. So instead of what clearly was wrong, since it was expecting a matter JS body before, it will just take a value. So let's try a value of 100. Okay, now, so, I should delete this and see if that's better on the bounce. It's not, but we are gonna make this heavier. All right, so now it just stops there. Let's say we put the bounce on the path. Set bounce, one, one. 
house. Let's make it 5,000. Ten thousand? How heavy does it need to be to not move? It's close. So realistically, we probably just want to use a static body. Dot add existing is static. So a static body would just simply not move. So is static true? And okay, we need that. And we have some errors. Maybe console. Body dot set bounces. Ah, oh, yes. For a static body, it is probably not. Okay. Let's make that bounce. Okay, there we go. So now we have a paddle and it bounces. Now it is static. That means the physics engine is not going to move it, but we can move it ourselves. And there may be some issues that we have to deal with when we do do that, um, like updating the physics uh, body with where we've moved it, but we'll handle that as we get there. So now here's our paddle, there's our ball, it's bouncing at it. And we're gonna close it with this part, and now in the next part, we're gonna look at creating, uh, we're gonna look at moving the paddle and other things at the game.